89.9 FM, that's where you answer. Very good morning to you. We're hoping that your day is treating you well. That's wherever you're finding yourself. It is yet another day where we are powering your future alongside our family from the Ministry of Industries, Mines and Energy. And today we are talking, um, or, you know, we you shining a spotlight on a key role that helps unlock Namibia's underground wealth. The economic geologist. Now, these professionals help identify where our future minds may be. They guard exploration and also investment that fuels economic growth. Joining me in studio today is Mr. Al Khan. He's an economic geologist at the Geological Survey of Namibia. And guess what? They play a vital role in mapping out mineral potential and supporting sustainable development. But before I get too excited with everything else, it's only fair we start off with good mornings. How are we doing today? Very well. Yeah. How are you? I'm great. Thank you very much. I always say, you know, uh, days like these are like moments in class, for me at least, and our listeners. And I think today is no exception. And it's only fair if we start off with... um, perhaps just laying the grounds equally and maybe you can share what exactly an economic geologist does and what, you know, how different is this from um, other types of geology? Well, um, economic geology, Mm -hmm. uh, basically, uh, is, uh, uh, it involves the formation of uh, mineral deposits and their distribution. So Mm -hmm. what an economic geologist does is Mm -hmm. basically just study that. Okay. Uh, and the idea is to support uh, sustainable mining mm-hmm. and mineral exploration. Mm. And um, the way that is different from uh, uh, what other geologists do, yeah. in essence, um, the um, economic geologists mm. basically focus on uh, mineable or viable uh, concentrations of uh, um, mineral resources. Okay. And uh, so it's not just the exciting, uh, <laughs> you know, think of uh, finding uh, minerals uh-huh. in the field, yeah. but they, they really focus on uh, their viability mm-hmm. uh, to contribute to our economy. Okay. Now, Namibia is known for its mineral wealth. I think that's something we like to also boast about. Um, how does your division help identify and prioritize new areas for exploration? Well, uh, we we uh, do mineral prospectivity studies, okay, and that in essence just entails uh, integration of different data sets, mm-hmm. so geoscientific data sets, okay, are uh, integrated to generate targets, mm. and basically uh, these targets are what um, basically make it very easy for exploration uh, companies okay. or um, any um, investor that is, that is interested in uh, venturing in uh, uh, mineral exploration. Mm-hmm. So that's, that's in essence how we do it. Okay. I mean, you are involved in compiling the National Minerals Resource Inventory. Um, I'm curious, what kind of data goes into this and how is it used by policymakers and investors? Well, uh, the mineral resources uh, inventory, mm. uh, basically, it, it has a, a component of uh, uh, data coming from everywhere, okay. um, from mineral exploration, mm-hmm. so exploration results, okay. uh, but also from literature uh, mm. and from um, research okay. work that we do mm-hmm. uh, at the survey. And uh, yeah, so um, we put it all together mm. uh, for, for the sake of basically supporting exploration. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, it's very important for investors uh, mm-hmm. because uh, um, it basically uh, it's, it basically acts as foundation data uh, for them to build upon, mm-hmm. and it, uh, it it basically also uh, supports um, uh, policy uh, making mm-hmm. uh, and decision makers can basically. Um, get this data and yeah. make decisions based on on on, on data. So data informed decisions. Mm. So yeah, it's very important in that uh, regard. Okay, good stuff. If you're just joining in, 99 FM, that's where you answer. Very good morning to you once again. It is the crossover, and I'm your host, Chante, powering the future with the Ministry of Industries, Mines, and Energy. In the studio with me is an economic geologist, giving us a little bit of an insight in terms of that. As we, of course, uh, shine a spotlight on key roles that help unlock Namibia's under 
ground wealth. And of course, who better to do it than Mr. El Tony, who is the economic geologist in studio with us. In a bit, we are going to tap into a whole lot more. I'm pretty excited about this one. Um, he's going to be talking on how, you know, their work supports responsible and sustainable mining practices. I'm sure you might have thought of that as well. And also just in his view, you know, what minor, uh, what minerals and regions in the country are showing uh, the most promising signs for future exploration. Stick around, don't touch the dial. We'll be back right after this. Namibia's energy future is bright, driven by innovation and our commitment to sustainability. At the Ministry of Mines and Energy, we ensure affordable and reliable security of energy supply. With goals anchored on renewable energy and diversifying our energy sources, we're building a resilient future focused on harnessing the power of nature. From our cities to the most remote villages, powering industries, uplifting communities and fostering economic growth. Harnessing our resources, powering our future. Today is really a beautiful, uh, if you ask me a beautiful lecture, I feel like I am truly in class as we touch base on what an economic geologist does and really some of the roles that they hold. And uh, this is also in terms of um, helping unlock uh, Namibia's underground uh, underground wealth. Yeah. Now, Mr. El Tony, who is an economic geologist at the Geological Survey of Namibia, actually got to break down what, you know, um, an economic geologist does. Um, and that is, as you know, the study really in itself is, is one that's centered around the formation and distribution of mineral deposits to support mineral exploration and sustainable resource development in the country. Uh, but right now, I want to get into something else. Uh, well, not very different, but I'm just, I'm also very curious. Uh, Mr. El Tony. How does your work support responsible uh, and sustainable mining practices, especially as we balance development with environmental concerns? Oh, well, um, economic geology, Mm -hmm. um, basically, it um, it supports that Mm -hmm. in in terms of uh, uh, advice. Yeah. Um, So what we produce, we produce products. Okay. And we produce um, data mm-hmm. that um, can um, advise um, investors yeah. and uh, anybody else interested mm-hmm. in uh, minerals yeah. uh, in mining mm-hmm. to as to where to go, right? Okay. So um, instead of uh, just speculating, mm. uh, one can actually know exactly where the minerals are okay. and where the highest potential for uh, a certain commodity mm. is. Okay. Um, so in that way, you avoid speculation, mm-hmm. which can uh, lead to environmental damage. Mm-hmm. Um, the other thing that we do is we encourage uh, local use of mineral resources. Okay. And uh, that's actually, which is, which I think it's an exciting um, point to, to put in place because, mm-hmm. uh, as you know, the Ministry of Mines and Energy is no longer that. It has now merged with industries, True. right? So, um, and, and, and the idea is to really to uh, um, bring on um, value addition mm. and maximize it. Okay. So, as economic geologists, mm. we, we basically uh, influence that mm. um, in the work that we do because uh, we... Uh, we look at uh, the value addition component as well. Okay. Yes. So, uh, which is sustainable because then mm. you're just not um, exporting raw materials, yeah. but you're also adding value locally. Mm. Nice. And you spoke about something that I was just like, yes, we're getting into that right now. Um, in your view, what minerals or regions um, in the country are showing the most promising signs for future explorations? And what excites you about that potential? <laughs> well, what's really exciting is uh, what's happening in the world right now. Okay. Uh, so um, several nations have identified um, so-called critical raw materials. Okay. And uh, uh, so Namibia is really uh, has has a lot of potential mm-hmm. on on these commodities. Okay. And uh, an example is lithium, raw mm-hmm. uh, rare earth elements, and uh, um, phosphate, mm-hmm. and so on. I can go on. The yeah. list is long. Yes. Um, so. Uh, the, these commodities are very important for what is going on right now in the world, mm. which is uh, transitioning from um, uh, carbon, um, so 
a carbon economy, mm-hmm. a carbon generating economy to decarbonization. Yeah. Uh, so green, the green energy transition. Mm. So these these commodities are very fundamental to that, and we okay. need them for that. And the regions that are showing potential in Namibia mm-hmm. are um, the western part of the country, okay. uh, primarily the Erongo region. Nice. Uh, as you know, lithium, mm-hmm. um, tin, yeah. and, and the like uh, mm-hmm. are very uh, well endowed there. Yeah. But also the southern part of the country. Mm. Uh, but not only that, we are also seeing uh, um, right now that uh, we are over-reliant, or at least since independence, we've been over-reliant on uh, uh, high-value commodities. Okay. But we also have industrial minerals mm. um, and so-called, they are called development minerals that we, we are yet to tap. Okay. And that, that has a lot of potential, especially as we move to industrialize. Uh, that is something that we, we should really uh, put emphasis on. All right. Well, that is the economic geologist at the uh, Geological Survey of Namibia. That's uh, in terms of uh, the Ministry of Industries, Mines and uh, Energy, Mr. Al Tony, who is, of course, giving us an insight there. So you also just get to visualise uh, the minerals and regions in Namibia that are showing the most promising signs. That's for future exploration. And, of course, we're going to hear the excitement as he speaks of a uh, you know a world where we were carbon reliant and now we're looking at uh, you know green sort of uh, energy we're looking at uh, uh, decarbonizing as well i know you've got a long day and i would uh, if by no chance of time i'd probably keep you here forever but i don't think that's how life works i need to uh, let you out of my space because i'm sure your day looks hectic but before we do any of that um any final words from your side yeah, um, mm. I'm, I'm sure that uh, what I just said uh, basically generated some interest mm-hmm. uh, in the public. Yeah. So if, uh, yeah, uh, maybe I'll just say some words to yeah. uh, encourage 100%. Uh, somebody who wants to get into this. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, one needs uh, to to basically have a desire for learning. Okay. Yeah, you need to learn a lot and keep learning constantly mm-hmm. because things keep changing. Yeah. Uh, and also, um, one needs to like, uh, you need to be, um, you need to be academically really, you need to put in effort academically mm. to get good grades. Okay. Uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah, in a nutshell, that's, that's <laughs> all I can say. All right. Well, if, uh, this has sparked a little interest in you or a whole lot of it, that is Mr. Tony indicating there that your will to learn should not die out at any point because it will be uh, something you'll need to continuously do. But also academically, you need to be determined. You need to be committed. And the hard work will come in all forms as well. Mr. Tony, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much. All right. Well, there you have it. And that is, as we had today's les- uh, lesson looking in on economic geologists, a uh, study that really highlights the formation and distribution of mineral deposits to support mineral exploration and sustainable resource development right here in the land of the brave. What geologists do is that they assist geological data to identify locations with economic potential for mining. Well, that's it. Until next week, we have your news coming up right now. Feel good on 99FM.